Greetings from the Council of Europe in Strasbourg, where the 10th edition of the World Forum for Democracy is getting underway. Government officials, civil society representatives and academics have traveled from across the globe to explore one theme, democracy, a new hope? The hot topics this year are, why is democracy in decline? Are we at a turning point? And what is the future of democracy? We'll be here over the next three days to follow all the debates and discussions. Stay tuned. Our democracies are in danger uh, and uh, it's increasing. I mean, we have to act right now. We have to listen to the citizens. We have to make sure that we put the citizens in the heart of the public debates uh, to threaten our democracies. We are all confronted à des remises en cause d'une manière ou d'une autre de la démocratie, qu'elle n'est jamais forcément éternelle, qu'il nous faut l'aimer, la chérir, la donner à la connaître pour pouvoir la, la perpétuer dans la, dans la durée. We've been following the first day of the World Forum for Democracy. It's been pretty lively and dramatic. The plenary session saw a mix of leading politicians, academics and economists. The Irish Foreign Minister put things very clearly. But in the past decade, the tide has turned somewhat. Amidst economic uncertainty and rising inequality, democracy has come under sustained assault. Today, as the Varieties of Democracy project records, we are back where we were when the Berlin Wall fell. Joan Hoey, editor of the Democracy Index, produced by the Economist Intelligence Unit, says democracy has been in decline for some time. Uh, that's about 15 years we've been living through this democracy uh, recession. And what we've seen in recent years is the public coming back uh, into um, the, the equation and demanding more representation, more accountability. And they are turning away from the kind of existing traditional systemic parties. We can look at what's been happening lately. And I think there's certainly this idea around that the pandemic um, and now the war in Ukraine um, means that we are at some kind of turning point. Roberto Foa explains how the COVID pandemic has affected democracy. It's really revived our conception of what is politically possible. Uh, if we are able to lock down, roll out vaccines and defeat a pandemic, then who's to say that we can't uh, reverse global climate change or end spatial inequalities, regional inequalities, uh, or provide a new deal for the next generation? The war in Ukraine was on everyone's mind today, and the forum engaged in a minute of silence in the country's honor. The conflict is an example of what happens when anti-democratic forces take power. Uh, when a democracy is not working, you can feel it. You cannot see it immediately, but it's about the freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of gathering, the vote to be free and not influenced by uh, bot media or by the different political actors. We are armless people, we don't have weapons, but we have energy, uh, we have uh, brave people who are not uh, going to give up uh, this fight. Alexander Konienko, Deputy Speaker of Ukraine's Parliament, says we have to fight for democracy. This plenary session was all about avoiding defeatism. It's up to everyone to use the tools available to reclaim democracy. The tools are neutral. I don't think the tools are the problem. Like anything, you know, the internet was like, hey, this is, you know, it was hope. It's going to give people, you know, engage people, give people a voice who didn't have it before. Same with the metaverse or any of the, those things. So I don't think you need to focus on the technology that is good or bad. It's all about how are people using it, right? The former president of Mongolia offered a very evocative description of where we stand now with democracy. You have to take care of democracy every day, like a baby, you know? You have to change diapers every morning. If you do that, democracy will be healthy. You know, I think uh, democracy is not in distress, but in a democracy in a challenging time. So there's definitely a new hope for democracy, as the Prime Minister of Iceland explains. We need uh, strong political parties, we need education for the future generations, but we also need solidarity between those who really want to stand by and protect the democratic system, so solidarity is key. Democracy is imperfect by nature, because it takes institutions and people's commitments. So we don't have to lose hope and faith in democracy. Actually, we should never lose faith in democracy.
In line with tradition, the first day of the forum ended on an uplifting musical note. <laughs> Thank you.